The Life and Death of the Mayor of Casterbridge by Thomas Hardy. She could hear his words to Henchard. Joshua Jopp, sir, by appointment, the new manager. The new manager, he's in his office, said Henchard bluntly. In his office, said the man with a stultified air. I mentioned Thursday, said Henchard, and as you did not keep your appointment, I have engaged another manager. There was no more to be said, and the man came out, encountering Elizabeth Jane in his passage. She could see that his mouth twitched with anger, and that bitter disappointment was written in his face everywhere. Elizabeth Jane now entered, and stood before the master of the premises. His dark pupils, which always seemed to have a red spark of light in them, though this could hardly be a physical fact, turned indifferently round under his dark brows until they rested on her figure. Can I speak to you? Not on business, sir said she. Yes. I suppose. He looked at her more thoughtfully. I am sent to tell you, sir, she innocently went on, that a distant relative of yours by marriage, Susan Mewson, a sailor's widow, is in the town, and to ask whether you would wish to see her. Oh, Susan is, still alive? He asked with difficulty. Yes, sir. Are you her daughter? Yes, sir. Her only daughter. What do you call yourself? Your Christian name? Elizabeth Jane, sir. Sit down, Elizabeth Jane, sit down, he said with a shake in his voice as he uttered her name, and sitting down himself he allowed his hands to hang between his knees, while he looked upon the carpet. Your mother, then, is quite well? She is rather worn out, sir, with travelling. A sailor's widow. When did he die? Father was lost last spring. Henchard winced at the word, father, thus applied. No, we have been in England some years. I was twelve when we came here from Canada. Ah, exactly. By such conversation he discovered the circumstances which had enveloped his wife and her child in such total obscurity that he had long ago believed them to be in their graves. These things being clear he returned to the present. And where is your mother staying? At the Three Mariners. And you are her daughter Elizabeth Jane, repeated Henchard. He arose, came close to her, and glanced in her face. I think, he said suddenly turning away with a wet eye, you shall take a note from me to your mother. I should like to see her. Dot, dot, dot. She is not left very well off by her late husband. His eye fell on Elizabeth's clothes, which, though a respectable suit of black, and her very best, were decidedly old-fashioned even to cast a bridge eyes. He sat down at the table and wrote a few lines next taking from his pocketbook a five-pound note which he put in the envelope with the letter, adding to it, as by an afterthought, five shillings. Sealing the hole up carefully he directed it to, Mrs. Newson, three mariners in, and handed the packet to Elizabeth. We must have a long talk together, but not just now. He took her hand at parting, and held it so warmly that she, who had known so little friendship, was much affected, and tears rose to her aerial grey eyes. Henchard's state showed itself more distinctly. Having shut the door he sat in his dining room stiffly erect, gazing at the opposite wall as if he read his history there. Begad! He suddenly exclaimed jumping up. I didn't think of that. Perhaps these are impostors and Susan and the child dead after all. However, a something in Elizabeth Jane soon assured him that, as regarded her, at least, there could be little doubt. And a few hours would settle the question of her mother's identity, 
for he had arranged in his note to see her that evening. In the meantime Elizabeth had reached the inn. Her mother, instead of taking the note with the curiosity of a poor woman expecting assistance, was much moved at sight of it. She did not read it at once, asking Elizabeth to describe her reception, and the very words Mr. Hench had used. Elizabeth's back was turned when her mother opened the letter. It ran thus, Meet me at eight o'clock this evening, if you can, at the ring on the Budmouth Road. The place is easy to find. I can say no more now. The news upsets me almost. The girl seems to be in ignorance. Keep her so till I have seen you. M.H.